What's going on everybody? This is Part Time Pilot. This is my final video on aircraft systems and it's going to be on the electrical systems of most trainer aircraft like a Cessna Skyhawk or a Cherokee Warrior. So there's two main sources of electricity on aircraft. You have your alternator and your battery. So the alternator usually sits up front right next to the engine and the propeller shaft and there's usually a belt connected so that when the engine is spinning the alternator is also spinning and then the battery can be near the engine uh, but it could also be found back here uh, by the luggage compartment uh, it really can be anywhere on an aircraft so it depends on your particular aircraft here we have a simple schematic of the electrical system of an aircraft starting with the primary aircraft bus the primary aircraft bus is a central point for the electricity for all the electrical components. So electricity comes into the bus and then the bus disperses the electricity to the individual components like the radios, the lights, the transponders, etc. So each one of these is also going to have an on off switch which either connects it when it's on or disconnects it when it's off from the primary aircraft bus and the electrical low so these switches are going to be found in the cockpit on your dashboard and so when you flip the radios on essentially what you're doing is you are connecting the radios to this primary aircraft bus telling that bus to provide the radios with some electricity so the alternator is our primary source of electricity when the aircraft engine is on a belt connected to the alternator from the spinning engine spins rotor inside the alternator which spins around the stator and it conducts electricity so also inside this alternator is a regulator so since the engine spins at different rpm this alternator is also going to spin at different rates and we don't want a bunch of different rates as you're changing the throttle changing the rpm drastically of the engine between your different phases of flight this alternator is going to produce a wide range of electricity we want constant electricity into this primary aircraft bus so inside this alternator is something we have that we have called a voltage regulator which basically regulates a constant voltage out of the alternator so the battery can also be a source of electricity and when the aircraft engine is off the alternator is not spinning so the battery is our primary source of electricity when the aircraft is off uh, the alternator also charges the battery when it's running so that whenever the engine turns off the battery is meant to be at full power now batteries can usually run for about 20 to 30 minutes so if you have a filled alternator, uh, just keep that in mind that you'll have electrical power for about 20 to 30 minutes. The alternator is usually set at a couple of volts uh, higher than the battery so that when it's operating, it still has a couple extra volts to charge the battery. So usually in aircraft, uh, most trainer aircraft, you're gonna see a 14 volt alternator and a 12 volt battery. You can also see in uh, bigger systems, a 28 volt alternator and 24 volt battery. Now let's add the master switch. So we're all familiar with this switch if, we're, if we've had any flights as a student pilot. It's the big red master switch inside the cockpit. Most aircraft, or some aircraft have this switch combined into one where it's just one big switch and it turns both the alternator and battery on or off at the same time. And then some of them are split so that you can turn just the alternator or just the battery on and off. And basically this connects the alternator and battery to the primary aircraft bus. The next component we need to talk about is circuit breakers. To protect electrical system from overloading a system, aircraft use circuit breakers or fuses to break the electrical pathway when an overload occurs. So the circuit breakers are in line here before the components over here to protect the components from damage if an overvoltage occurs. So what happens is in a circuit breaker, if there's an overvoltage, the circuit breaker pops out and it essentially is doing the same thing as switching the radios to off. It breaks the electrical pathway to the radios so that the radios are not damaged. Now in a fuse, what happens is the fuse just burns out and it all, when the fuse burns out, it breaks this pathway as well, protecting the radios. Now most aircraft nowadays use circuit breakers because when a circuit breaker pops out, all you have to do is pop it back in to reconnect the circuit. If a fuse pops out, 
you have to replace the fuse and the FAA requires that you have three sets of replacements. So you have three replacements for each each fuse of each electrical component. So that's too much to do. So we just use circuit breakers because we can simply just pop them back in. But know that if your circuit breaker is popping out is likely a bigger problem and you should not probably not continue to fly, especially if it happens more than once, because it may be signs of a, a much larger issue that could be a real emergency. Okay, so this is the electrical system. If you have any questions, please comment below as always. And please follow me on Instagram at part period time period pilot. Thanks.